Welcome to the Painting Wizards Workshop. Today you'll be apprenticing with me to learn how to paint any figure and make it look great. I love painting miniatures. I've been painting for more than 15 years, both as a hobby and as a professional. I've painted thousands and thousands of figures using a great variety of methods. Now I'm going to show you some of the tricks and techniques I've developed over the years to paint fast and accurately. Learning how to paint quickly and skillfully will help you maintain the energy and confidence to complete your figures and be happy with the results. With a little practice, you'll be able to paint any figure and it will look fantastic. Eventually, you will develop a distinctive style all your own. First, we'll take a quick run through of setting up and prepping figures for painting. Then I'll show you ways to make even simple paint schemes look great, including mixing colors, accessorizing, and painting great faces. Next, we'll move on to more advanced work and my secrets for speed painting armies so you can paint dozens of figures very, very quickly. Let's get started. The best situation is a permanent figure painting area with a bright lamp and all your painting gear right at hand. A small table in your bedroom, garage, or basement will work just fine. This is best because you don't have to spend time setting up before each painting session. Even 10 minute painting sessions eventually add up to finished figures, and that's the goal, to paint well and to finish your figures. Painting miniatures is hard on brushes, and having durable brushes with good tips is crucial. I recommend Winsor Newton Series 7. These are high quality red sable brushes that have fantastic points. Get a minimum of three brushes, a size triple zero, a zero, and a one or two. Carefully examine your brush before you buy it. Wet the tip and roll it to see if it comes to a point. If you don't get a great looking tip, keep looking. Buy only hobby or craft acrylic paints. I recommend black, white, yellow, red, blue, gold, silver, flesh, and dark brown as a starter set. Get nice, bright, solid shades of the primary colors, blue, red, and yellow. A deep brown is really handy because you can lighten it with either white or yellow and end up with several good browns. I recommend a darker warrior or tan flesh color like this one. These colors will give you a basic set to work with. After you've painted a few figures and you're ready to expand, I recommend you add purple, green, red brown, medium brown, and light brown. Eventually you'll find it's really nice to have a dark, medium, and light of all of your primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. When you get fanatical about your painting, you'll start to collect gray colors and probably end up with a whole shelves of them like me. Now that we've gotten ourselves set up, we can look at prepping our figures for painting. This includes trimming flash, assembling, and priming. When miniatures are cast, there's usually some flashing or mold lines which need to be cut off. The best weapon for this is your standard hobby knife. They're sharp, so be careful and cut away from yourself. You can knock off the little thin dry spaghetti-like pieces with your fingernail or hobby knife. This is also a good time to straighten bent swords or spears. The flappy bits occur because the mold didn't close all the way and the little metal leaked out. Scraping along the seam is usually enough to get them all off. Please be careful not to gouge your fingers. Mold slippage lines are caused when the mold moves a little during casting and the figure has a seam where the two halves are slightly displaced. There is no really great solution here. Either trim away the excess along the seam or return the figure. You may find tabs or extra pieces of metal joining parts of the figure which need to be trimmed off. Notice how I'm using both thumbs to control the knife here. Check the bases for big chunks of extra metal and scrape those off to make your base flat and stable. The best glue for assembling metal figures is cyanoacrylate. I like medium consistency, known as gap filling, which dries in about 5 to 10 seconds. These glues stink and they're bad for your brain, so make sure you have good ventilation before using them. Before you put glue on anything, check that the two parts to be glued fit together and trim them if necessary. Generally, the less glue you use, the better. When you put too much on, it takes longer to dry and the bond will actually be weaker. Accelerator is a product that's helpful if you're having a hard time getting two pieces to stay in place. Simply spray Accelerator on one piece and then put cyanoacrylate glue on the other. 
As soon as the two pieces touch, they will be bonded, so take care as you put them together. Another product you'll want to have on hand is Debonder. Cyanoacrylate is very strong, and you can stick your fingers to your figure very easily. Squirting Debonder on and working it around can unstick you. Be careful, though, because Debonder will also remove paint from your figures. Another important caution when using cyanoacrylate glue is to wear some eye protection. This glue is activated by moisture, so getting it in your eyes is extremely unpleasant, and you definitely want to avoid it. Assembling plastic figures is a little different. Plastic figures come on a huge piece of plastic called a sprue. You can use your hobby knife to cut them off. Put the joint as close to the cutting surface as possible and support the part being cut so it doesn't snap and break. You will definitely need to trim plastic pieces after you've cut them off the sprue. For these figures, you will be using plastic cement. This glue actually dissolves the plastic on the two parts and then fuses them together. They literally become one piece and the bond is very strong. Unlike the cyanoacrylate glues, there is no danger of gluing yourself to your figures. You do need to be careful not to get this glue where you don't want it because it may partially dissolve or scar the figures. Priming is the last important step before painting. Paint doesn't stick that well to metal. So if you don't prime your figures, it will be really easy to rub the paint off and ruin your paint job. Brush-on primer is not my first choice, but it works if you only want to prime a couple of figures. It dries very quickly, so you can begin painting right away. The challenge is not to get too much primer on the figure, which might obscure the sculpted details. Be sure to pop any bubbles with the tip of your brush as I am doing here. Clean your brush as soon as you're done priming, because this stuff really sticks and it's more difficult to get out of your brush than regular paint. I prefer spray primer because it's easy to get a nice even coat without losing detail. Use only primer sold at hobby stores. Regular spray paints are much too thick. White is best for your first figures and any time you want bright colors. It is important to set up your figures for spraying correctly. I like to use a large box lid and lay my figures down on their backs in a row. This allows me to contain any overspray and to carry the figures easily. It's best to spray outdoors with good weather. Don't breathe this stuff. Avoid spraying in freezing or wet conditions because it will ruin the priming job. You may have to shake the can for a while. Do a small test spray just to make sure that the paint is mixed thoroughly. This avoids getting any big globs or thick spray on the first few figures. Make one quick pass over the row and a little past the end. Spray just enough primer on the figures to cover them completely and not obscure any detail. Use a low angle coming up underneath the figures. Then turn the box around and spray again at a low angle coming down from the top. This helps to get all the little undercuts and crevices coated. Once this side is dry, come back and flip them over and spray the other side. Now we're at the fun part, actually painting the figures. Keep in mind while you're watching that I've done these things thousands of times. You may not paint as fast or as easily as I do yet, but as you practice you'll get better and faster really quickly. You can shake your paint bottle or use a toothpick, paper clip, or even the handle of your brush to mix the paint. Wipe as much paint as you can back into the jar. Avoid dipping the brush in beyond the metal part. This gets the paint deep into the bristles, which is very hard to clean out. This is the proper grip for holding a paintbrush, and it will give you the control you need. It may take a little while to become comfortable with this hand position, but it's absolutely worth it for painting with accuracy. I recommend painting the flesh tones first for new painters. The best strategy is to begin by painting the inside, hard to reach areas like the face. Use the largest brush you can, like your number one or two, because it will speed up your painting. By painting the flesh first, I can paint more quickly and even be a little sloppy at the edges. This allows me to use that larger, faster brush. I know I can come back and easily paint over this lighter tone with my next color. Between each color, you need to clean your brush. Sometimes I swish the brush around and sort of froth up the water a bit. I gently roll the brush against the side of the glass jar if the paint is really stuck on. Then I wipe the brush on a piece of toilet paper or tissue. 
I usually repeat this process again. Don't mash your brush down and flatten it out. You'll trash the brush. After you've laid down your flesh tone, you can come back with the next main color of your figure. At first, you will probably find that it takes all of your concentration to get the paint where you want it. Holding the brush may be unfamiliar and awkward. If you are not the type of person who regularly has to do detail work with your fingers, you may find it a bit of a challenge to accurately paint your figures. Keep trying because this is simply a matter of practice. A few figures later, it begins to feel easier. Pretty soon you'll think, wow, I can do this much faster than when I started. At the start, the idea is just to get the paint on the whole figure and get the paint where you actually want it as much as possible. I find it is a lot easier and faster to overpaint the large areas on a figure rather than accidentally leave white spots. Going back to touch up can really slow me down and I have to be extremely careful not to get the touch up paint where I don't want it. If you make a mistake, don't worry. You can come back and fix it later. Be careful not to leave large blobs of paint which would change the texture of the figure when it's dry. One trick to speed up your painting is to focus on painting a clean line only once. The first color you put down in an area can go over the edges a bit. Then when you come back with the adjacent color, take the time to paint that line precisely. This greatly speeds up your painting since you're not painting the slower, more careful lines twice. Here I'm making the clean line between the flesh color and the blue robe on the wizard, being careful not to leave any white spots. Here I'm stabilizing my painting by touching the fingers of both hands together. This allows me to be a lot more steady and accurate the first time around and saves me touch up time later. Smooth the paint out as you brush it on. If you don't, it may dry with ridges and blobs which will ruin the texture and be very noticeable. The warrior's sword should look smooth and straight, so I'm finishing with several long strokes that will make the texture of the paint follow the natural design of the sword. When painting the cloak, I'm being careful at the line of the arm in the cloak. Once I've got that line, I can paint more quickly and finish the rest of the cloak without having to be as careful with the brush strokes. All these little tricks greatly speed up my painting. You can use fast strokes to cover a large area that is not near anything else. Paint in the natural direction of the fabric using long smooth strokes which will simulate the natural lines of the cloth once it's dry. Here I have enough paint on the brush to be able to sort of slide the paint along the line. Rather than trying to put the brush down exactly at the line, which would mean painting very slowly and carefully, I put the brush down away from the line, then move the paint along the line with a fluid motion. At the bottom of the wizard's cloak are some beautifully sculpted symbols. It would be very tedious and slow to try and paint the symbols yellow first and then paint blue all around them. Instead, I'm going to paint right over them quickly, then come back later and paint them carefully. To do the details, I'll use a smaller brush with a finer point, such as the triple zero brush. Now it's relatively easy to paint these symbols clearly. Notice how I touch the pinky of my painting hand to the base of the figure to help stabilize my painting position. Now that we've got the main colors on our figures, we should take a look at an important aspect of figure composition called accessorizing. Accessories include boots, belts, gloves, quivers, bags, and other equipment. The general idea is to create balance by using the same color on several accessories located on different parts of the figure. This works best if the two items are not right next to one another. You can match the color of the gloves and boots, or backpack and gloves, or the bow and the arrow shafts. Accessorizing not only makes your figures look good, it can also speed up your painting. It's more efficient because you don't have to clean your brush and open a second bottle of paint. There are some limits to this. Like anything, it can be overdone. On most figures, two or three times is enough. You can also make your figure look more harmonious and balanced. 
by using the same color other places in the figure and then modifying it just a little bit by adding white or black or yellow. For example, here I've mixed a little black into my white to make gray for the wizard's beard. Now I'm simply adding more black to the gray mixture for his hat. This keeps the two shades of gray in the same overall color tone and scheme. Here I'm mixing yellow into dark brown for the wizard's staff, which harmonizes nicely with the dark brown on his pouch. For the barbarian's hair, I'm mixing both white and yellow into the brown. The brown I used is the same brown as her boots, so the colors harmonize, even after mixing and lightening. You can also use accents of the same color in little bits over the entire figure. In this case, I'm painting red on the barbarian's jewels and on the band around her boots, and then adding the same red to her arm and leg bandages. Since she is in battle, I want to add some blood to her sword. First, I'm going to make her sword more realistic looking. I've already painted the sword a gunmetal gray, and now I'm coming back again with pure silver just along the edge. This is a great technique for any blade and it will make it appear sharp. Next I'm going to put a little red on the tip of my brush and make some quick strokes on the front and back for blood. This really pulls the whole look together and adds a lot of energy and ferocity to her as a character. One mistake I made as a beginning painter was to try and mix any color I wanted with a limited selection of paints. Paint is not pure colored light, so there are some chemical limitations. For example, most of the time your basic red and blue do not make a good purple. You cannot take a light blue and make a darker true blue by adding black. For the accessories we just painted, we started with a good solid medium tone base color and then simply lightened or darkened it with white, yellow, or black. Painting faces is a little tricky, but with practice anyone can have great faces on their figures. Faces really have four elements, flesh tone, eyes, eyebrows, and lips. Let's begin with eyes. There are three steps to painting a really great eye. You will need to use your brush with the best point. I always clean my brush before doing eyes, and I might clean it every couple of figures if I'm painting a unit. As you clean the brush, Form it into a good point by rolling it in a tissue paper or against your hand. Stabilize yourself to reduce any small wiggling movements of your hands or arms. I usually touch my fingers together and then either touch my elbows to the table or to my belly. This is detail work and to get it right you have to go slowly and really concentrate. The first step is to paint a slightly oversized black or dark brown eye shaped spot. The spot should cover the eye and darken the eye socket. This black eye spot is going to be a background outline for the future eye. In most cases, the white of the eye is hard to see against the flesh color. With this black outline around it, you'll be able to see the eye easier. Next, repeat this procedure with a slightly smaller white line. Allow the original black to remain showing all around the white to outline it. On most figures, I paint black pupils. The spot required for the pupil is often so small that any other colors may get lost. To do the pupil, you need to get a tiny bead of paint on the tip of your brush. Paint either a point or a thin vertical line that touches the black outline at both the top and the bottom of the eye. Pupils are normally partially covered by the eyelids, so you don't see a perfect circle. The pupil should never be completely surrounded by white unless you're trying to make the eyes look terrified or especially bulging like this dwarf. Doing brown pupils as opposed to black ones doesn't really show, but sometimes I will use a bright true blue for the pupil, such as on this blonde barbarian. If the figure has very deeply sculpted eyes, like this warrior, you can put the white directly onto the eye socket. 
The first few times it may take a couple of attempts, but just chalk it up to experience and know that it will get easier and the eyes will get better with practice. If you make a mistake on the eyes, you can touch it up with some flesh color. If you don't get the result you want, just redo it. Great eyes can really make a figure and they are worth the effort. It also really helps to get the eyes symmetrical. Once you've gotten a few eyes under your belt, you can start to experiment. For example, try to make both eyes look somewhere. You can make the eye whites a slightly more sinister shape by touching a bead of paint down close to the nose and then drawing it out to a teardrop shape that slopes slightly upward toward the ear. This can come out really well, but it does take great brush control. Another detail that is really fun to play with and adds a lot of character to your figure is the eyebrows. Some figures have great eyebrows sculpted on them like this one. This warrior figure does not have sculpted eyebrows, so I'm using a triple zero brush to paint them on. You can create facial expressions by varying the angle, thickness, and shape of the eyebrow. By tilting the eyebrows here, I'm giving the warrior a more intense, focused appearance than a straight eyebrow would give you. Eyebrows tilting the opposite way may denote fear or sadness. You can also curve the eyebrows upward to make a more sinister figure. Curving downward makes a more compassionate expression. With all this said about eyes and how to paint them, I should add that eyes on units or on 15 millimeter figures are not always necessary. Here's an example of a unit I didn't paint the eyes on and the figures are perfectly playable. For realistic lips, mix a bit of red with the flesh color and paint it just on the lower lip. It adds a lot to the face, bringing some life to the lips and differentiating them from the rest of the face. Good bases work to frame the figure and enhance it. Some figures have nicely sculpted bases with details like skulls and rocks on them that you can paint and they'll look great just as they are. On figures with very simple bases, you can just paint them green or brown or black or gray. Using decals can be an easy way to enhance your figure's appearance. Simply cut out the design you want, soak it in water for a few seconds, and pick it up with tweezers. Position it where you want it 